I'm Sherilyn Skolnicki, and this is Brilliant Balance, the show for working women who are ready to shine. Each week, I bring you ideas, inspiration, and insight on balance, business, and getting it all done gracefully. You ready? Let's be brilliant. This is episode 184 of the Brilliant Balance podcast, how to make time for yourself without feeling guilty. Welcome back, my friends. I am so excited about today's episode because, boy, do I want you to make some time for yourself. And I really know how hard it is to do that without having feelings of guilt creep in. I was thinking back to this last year and how we were all feeling in March of 2020, you know, the start of the pandemic and shutdown and quarantine and lockdown and all the phrases we were using. And I I remember thinking, I remember talking about this, like how it felt like we were going to have so much time to do whatever we wanted. Like all of a sudden our responsibilities had been taken away so many things got canceled, kids' activities were on hiatus, school wasn't happening, you know, we weren't carpooling anywhere. It felt like, wow, we are going to be just swimming in time. And then as things unfolded, and we all now know, you know, that time got quickly consumed with more work, right, that we were able to do from home, but it it multiplied somehow. So much childcare. I mean, so much, whatever the ages of your children are, whether they were babies and toddlers who were with you 24-7, school-age children who now you were responsible for supervising their education, tweens and teens who were grappling with all of the changes coming at them and, you know, the loneliness that ensued and the uncertainty that followed, you know, and so much time invested in figuring out how to creatively manage a house full of people trying to survive a pandemic. I mean, there really wasn't much time for ourselves, it felt like. And so I think it's time for a reset. This is a great opportunity to remind ourselves that we can, in fact, make some time for ourselves. As the world is reemerging into a sense of normalcy, schools are ramping up, just in time to ramp down for the summer, right? But activities are coming back. Camps are back on online this summer, meaning happening this summer. There, it feels like this is a great moment to reconsider where we can make some space for ourselves. And especially with Mother's Day right around the corner, I think it's the perfect time to give ourselves this gift. So this is the gift I want you to give yourself, especially if you're a mom, that you take a minute today with me to think through what has to be true for you to make some time for yourself and to do it without feeling guilty. Because here's the thing, making time for what you need isn't a luxury, right? It's part and parcel of being a human. And I think, in fact, here's something I've been dancing with lately. I think that often when we talk about work-life balance, right? What we really mean is the balance between time spent on things we have to do and things we want to do. You know, if you picture sort of the two sides of the equation, it's not really work and life that we're trying to balance. We're trying to balance how much time is spent on things I have to do, whether that is at work for my paid job, whether it's in my household, whether it's part of parenting, whether it's community involvement, That's one side of the equation, right? They feel like obligations or responsibilities. And the other side is, is there space for things I want to do, things I choose to do, things I like or love doing? Because when we have enough time for those things that we want to do, right, which you might call time for ourselves, then we feel like we have a good sense of balance. Otherwise, you know, maybe not so much. So The challenge is it can really be triggering. It can cause extreme guilt to say what we want and then actually go do it. But there's great power in knowing what you want. And there's even more power in being willing to protect time for it. Despite challenges maybe from some people in your life, despite questioning 
or that raised eyebrow of judgment or friction, you know, from your family or friends or colleagues. So I want you to claim that power. So for today's episode, that's what we're going to get into is sort of the why, what, and how of making time for yourself. And then a little bonus section on what it takes to do this without a trace of guilt. Okay. So let's start with why we need some time for ourselves. And I want you to think of this as, for the purposes of today, sort of time alone, right? Some of the time for yourself might actually be social time, you know, where you want to go out with a girlfriend or you want to, you know, be in the company of other people. And that may be something that you want to do. But I want you to think kind of specifically about time that you're going to spend away from your obligations. So Psychology Today did has probably done a lot of pieces on this, but they did a piece I was reviewing in preparation for today's episode. And some of the benefits of having time for ourselves really are around mental health, brain health, right? Giving your brain that chance to reboot. It's pretty clear that time for ourselves improves our levels of concentration or focus. It increases our productivity when we go back to the demands of our day-to-day lives. And it gives us that opportunity to think reflectively, right? To think more deeply about some of the things going on in our lives, whether they're challenges or whether they're blessings. When we sort of step away from the buzz of life, we get that chance to think more deeply. And often, that gives us an ability to problem solve more effectively, right? And then also time alone or time for ourselves gives us a better sense of self-awareness, right? That can lead to a better understanding of what drives us, what inspires us, what excites us. So when we know ourselves better because we've shut out all the noise And we're left with our own thoughts and our own feelings, right? Which, you know, as I say that, you may be sitting there thinking, well, that's kind of a scary place to be. I'm not sure I want to be alone with my own thoughts and feelings. But that willingness to sit with our thoughts and our feelings drives self-awareness. And when we have good self-awareness, we are better in relationship with others, right? When we know ourselves, then we are more fully present in our relationships, and it improves the quality of our relationships. So this type of self-care, this willingness to invest in ourselves truly does have benefit to the people around us, right? We are better in relationship with them when we are more in touch with ourselves, and then we are actually more effective, meaning higher concentration, higher productivity, better ability to problem solve, when we have had this time alone. So no question about it, making time for yourself is a power practice. And as you're hearing me talk about making time for yourself, your mind is probably pulling up images or, you know, flashes of what that means for you. Okay? Because what you do with this time for yourself is up to you. By definition, right? It is completely up to you. Here's my caveat. Make it something that feels delicious, right? Make the choice something that feels delicious. And I'm choosing that word because often the kind of people that, you know, listen to the Brilliant Balance podcast or are in our community are people who when given a little bit of time that's at their discretion will choose to catch up on work, right? Whether that's paid work or household work, we are chronically feeling behind, chronically feeling like if I just had more time, I could get more done. And so if we're given that little gift of here's some time to spend in whatever way you choose, we will often make that misstep of spending it doing more work. And again, go back to that equation I was setting up on one side, things we have to do, and on the other side, things we want to do. So I am asking you today to intentionally choose something from that second bucket, right? From things you want to do that don't necessarily have an end result that is, you know, I got something checked off my to-do list. I was productive today, 
right? We're trying to find restorative time away from that so that when you come back to your to-do list, you feel a renewed sense of energy. So we want to pick something that feels delicious. And if you're going to push through all of the challenges, all of the resistance that might come up for you in order to make it happen, let's make it count, (laughs) okay? Now, you may have to start small to build some tolerance, both for yourself and for your crew, you know, your family, your colleagues, if you are not in the habit of making time for yourself or for things that you want to do, you might have to build a little muscle here. So in any pursuit, there's sort of a high, medium, and low level of, I'll call it indulgence, right? So as an example, I love to read. I've talked about this before on the show. It's it's something that I've loved to do since before I can remember. So I can almost always justify a little time with a nonfiction book, right? I read a ton of nonfiction. I love to kind of learn more about my field of practice. I'm naturally curious about lots of things. So justifying, you know, 15 or 20 minutes to read a piece of a a chapter of a nonfiction book is pretty easy for me to justify. And I like it. It feels good. But if I sit down and read a novel, you know, in what I would call a compressed period of time, like let's say I'm at the pool and I read, you know, half a book in an afternoon, or I sit in the backyard in one of our Adirondack chairs and, you know, read chapter after chapter after chapter of a novel, that feels like the next level of a treat. And then true luxury would be sitting in a library or a bookstore with a stack of books, you know, and if it's a bookstore, maybe a cup of coffee, just for hours, right? Flipping through those books and and realizing that there, it's limitless, the number of volumes that I could access and kind of follow my curiosity from page to page. So if you can feel how that kind of escalates, right? 15 or 20 minutes of a nonfiction book, maybe an hour or more with a novel, and then like a whole evening with a stack of books is just nirvana to me, okay? Do you ever find yourself saying, I just need a minute to breathe? While the whole idea of meditation can sound totally intimidating, I've found that stepping away from the chaos of life, even just for a few minutes, is incredibly restorative. So if you're short on time, but could use a few moments of peace right about now, listen to my five-minute meditation for working moms. It'll help you clear your head and come back to your day feeling centered and refreshed. Head over to brilliant-balance.com forward slash breathe. Press play and settle in for a few mini moments of peace right now. If you think you love fitness, right? Level one might be, I am going to go do this workout in my basement, ideally with no one else with me, right? I'm just going to get down there. I'm going to turn on this app and I'm going to get 30 minutes of working out. You know, your next level might be, I'm going to get out of the house and take a spinning class at a studio or go to Orange Theory or wherever. And that top tier of true luxury, like I can't believe I'm doing this for myself, would be something like maybe a weekend yoga retreat, right? You feel how it escalates. You don't have to start at the top. If you're out of practice, you can start with something that feels a little simpler, Maybe it takes a little less time. It's a little easier to fold into the flow of your household. Let's say you love to cook or bake. You know, baking a batch of your favorite cookies with no helpers, right? No one tasting batter, just you getting them to look the way you want them to look at the end. Maybe they're fancy cookies. You know, that's like a level one cooking indulgence. Taking it up a notch might be that you make a lovely dinner. You know, it has multiple dishes and some sauces and multiple steps involved and things have to rest in between. You know, that's maybe a level two, but you can still do that on like a Saturday night with people around, right? The kids can be kind of in and out. And then the third level may be, you know, hosting a dinner party and bringing out all the your favorite tablescapes and, you know, placemats and silverware and china and crystal or whatever feels good. But really kind of leaning into, you know, new recipes and and taking your time to really invest fully in that experience. You know, if you love shopping, 
Level one might be, look, I took 20 minutes and I did some online shopping and it's going to show up at my door, but it's stuff I want. We Hopefully you've had time for that this year, right? Level two might be 30 minutes alone at a store that is close by your home that you were able to go to before you picked the kids up from practice. Like you went to Home Goods by yourself or Old Navy or someplace simple. And the next level might be like a whole day, you know, at the mall or in your favorite shopping district in your city, just poking around without an agenda, right? So I want you to assess, first of all, what sounds good to you, right? None of these may be your interests or hobbies. Maybe you love to golf. Maybe you love to sail. Maybe whatever, okay? What you do is completely up to you, but make it something that feels delicious. And then I want you to challenge yourself. Can you go up a level from your norm, right? If you're kind of a level one player here, you're able to get 15 minutes, 30 minutes. Can you get a few hours, right? Can you can you challenge yourself to go to that next level? If you're already good at getting a few hours, can you schedule something more luxurious, right? More time consuming, more time away for yourself to really get the full restorative benefits of that. So that's the what, right? We talked about why it matters and what you might do at different levels. And now I want to talk about how to do it, asterisks, without guilt, okay? So the first part of the how, if you're really struggling with this, is to adopt my mantra of what gets scheduled gets done. Because if you're struggling to make time for yourself, If you don't schedule it, it will never happen. I'm sorry to say, right? It just won't happen. You're not spontaneously going to become someone who knows how to do this or who remembers how to do this. So scheduling the time where you can sort of put a barricade around it, bring in some help where you need it, whether that's with children or you need to protect some time against meetings so you can take an afternoon off or end your day at a reasonable hour, Scheduling that time, deciding how much time is possible, right? When is it going to happen? Like which day of the week, which day of the month? And then getting it on your calendar is the number one tactic that you can use to ensure that this actually gets done. It's a huge part of the how. And if you skip over it, your odds of success are much, much, much lower. Okay. By the way, this works for anything that you want to get done. If it's, uh, you know, an actual must-do task for work or for home, if it's date night with your spouse, if it's one-on-one time with one of your children, if it's calling your mom, whatever it is, this principle of what gets scheduled gets done is the game changer in terms of the how. But I want to talk about the reason you probably started listening to this episode in the first place, and that's the without guilt part of this, okay? And I want to speak straight to your heart on this that no one can do this part for you, okay? We can help you. Your spouse can help you. One of your kids can help you. Your mom can help you. Your sister can help you decide what to do and actually get it scheduled. Like, you can bring in some help there. No one can do this without guilt part for you. And I want you to ask yourself, who's in charge of how I feel? Who's in charge of how I feel? And the answer to that is you are. No one else is in charge of how you feel. So we get this conflated sometimes because we think that someone's actions control our feelings. We see the, you know, we say, I'm going to go read this novel in the backyard. And our husband raises an eyebrow and we say, oh, he's mad at me. You know what? Never mind. I don't need to read today. It's fine. I'll do whatever else instead. Okay. But I want you to ask yourself, what if they are upset or mad or sad or surprised even by your choice to spend some time on your own? Are you going to let that be enough to stop you? Or are you going to push through that discomfort to still get the outcome, all those benefits of having some time for yourself? If that raised eyebrow, that you know, questioning glance, that ill-timed comment is enough to stop you from proceeding, then I can't get you the benefits of this. And I, or I certainly can't get them without guilt. 
So two questions that are sometimes helpful to ease through the guilt is, you know, remembering I'm in charge of how I feel. And if they're upset or mad or sad, that is not something I can control. But then here's the the two questions that are sometimes helpful. Is there maybe a silver lining for them in this situation? Is there some hidden benefit in my choice for them? Examples. Do you come back happier? Are you lighter and more pleasant to be around after you've had a little bit of time away? Do they have an opportunity, if we're talking about your spouse, let's say, to spend time with the children in their own way without you supervising and controlling every moment of that situation? Does it give them permission to do something they want to do, right? There's a little bit of, oh, you did this. Great. Maybe that means I can do the thing I want to do, right? Do they gain an appreciation for how you typically manage the day when they're learning to do it on their own? Is there a silver lining in your choice for them that you can actually feel good about? Do the kids get to do something in a different way, right? Is there a different set of rules when you're not around? And they love it when it's time for that set of rules to be in play, okay? And the second question is, can I reframe this guilt as gratitude? can I reframe this guilt as gratitude? I did a whole episode on this a while back, but if you are feeling guilty because someone is helping you so that you can have some time for yourself, can you just reframe that feeling of guilt as gratitude? I'm so thankful that my mom was willing to watch the children, that my colleague went to that meeting so I didn't have to, that my boss said it was okay that I didn't go to that meeting on Friday afternoon. Can I reframe my guilt as gratitude to get some freedom from it? And if you are listening to me say this and thinking, I just can't, I just can't, I just feel so guilty, that's your assignment. Your assignment is test yourself. Try this. Try doing it anyhow. Try doing it and feeling guilty until the guilt subsides. Because the benefits of having time for yourself are so clear. And the the endless number of ideas that are out there of how you might spend that time, right? And the simplicity of scheduling it so that it actually happens. I can lead you right to water. This next part of doing it, pushing through and actually doing it to see if you can in fact do it without guilt or if the guilt will ease over time, that part only you can do. And I hope you will. I hope you will. All right, next time on the podcast, I have a guest. I love your feedback on these guests. We've had so many great guests this year, and I just love the comments you all are giving us about uh, the guests we're having. My guest next week is Diane Downing. Diane is a physician at Canyon Ranch, which is the acclaimed wellness resort. It is in Tucson, Arizona. And her topic is live younger, longer. Love it. I cannot wait for this conversation. So don't miss next week. If you are new around here to the Brilliant Balance community, come join us in the Facebook group. Just search for Brilliant Balance. Join us. I would love to welcome you in there or follow along on Instagram. I'm at C Skolnicki or you can do brilliant underscore balance. Those are the two Instagram handles, depending on, you can follow both, see what kind of content you like better there. And I love hearing from you via DMs in Instagram or Facebook. It's a great way for me to get feedback on the show. So thanks for listening today. Till next time, my friends, let's be brilliant. This is the podcastfactory.com.